In February, the Supreme Court quashed the electoral bond scheme, saying it was unconstitutional. It ordered the State Bank of India to share all information on who donated how much to which political party. SBI was supposed to submit this information to the Election Commission by March 6. However, two days before the deadline, the SBI filed an application requesting the Supreme Court to extend this deadline to June 30. This would mean that the citizens will get to know crucial details about which business was funding which political party only after the Lok Sabha elections are well out of the way. SBI claims the information on who donates and who gets the bonds is kept in two different silos within sealed envelopes. It will take months to match the data in these two silos, SBI has told the courts. Over 22,000 bonds were sold. So the SBI says it will have to match over 44,000 data points to link the donors to the beneficiary political parties. But is it really so difficult for SBI to dig out this information? Remember, SBI is one of the biggest Indian banks. I mean, this is the bank that does millions of transactions worth thousands of crores through sophisticated software every day without losing track of even a rupee. Then, was it overseeing the electoral bonds process without really knowing where the money was moving from whom to which political party? We at the Reporters Collective went back to documents brought out by Commodore Lokesh Batra. What they reveal is shocking. The same SBI has been religiously providing granular details and aggregated data from across the country on electoral bonds to the government at very short notice. It regularly gave detailed information on sale and redemption of electoral bonds to the government, like how many electoral bonds were sold and encashed across the country the worth of these bonds and whether they were in digital or physical form. To the apex court, the bank said that the information on donors and receiving political parties was not centralized. That information on sale was given to the main office in Mumbai by authorized branches in sealed covers. Likewise, the information on encashment was recorded separately by branches and then sent to the main office. But this decentralized system worked very efficiently on finance ministry's directions. Information on all electoral bonds sold and encashed by parties was shared with the government within 48 hours. In one bizarre case, we found proof that the SPI ensured a political party gets to encash expired electoral bonds illegally. And it did so on the express instructions of the finance ministry. So this is what happened. A political party went to the New Delhi branch of SBI and said, we have these expired electoral bonds which we'd like to still in cash. The Delhi branch reached out to the Mumbai corporate office and said, hey, this political party has come with these expired bonds, what should we do? And the Mumbai corporate office very quickly reached out to the finance ministry in Delhi and gave it all the details. The finance ministry again acted with great speed and told the bank and cash these electoral bonds regardless. The Mumbai corporate office went back to the Delhi office and said, and cash it regardless. All this happened within a day's time. This is the speed with which SBI can track every bond and inform the government if it is ordered to do so. In fact, each electoral bond has a unique and hidden serial number. These numbers were embedded on the bonds to maintain a complete audit trail, tracking the bond and the money from the beginning till the end when it reaches the political party's hands. We have revealed documents where the finance ministry admits the SBI can tell who bought the bond the moment a political party comes to encash it at the bank's branch anywhere in the country. Right that moment, instantly. The finance ministry internally admits, quote, the records of the purchaser are always available in the banking channel 
and may be retrieved as and when required by the enforcement agencies." Unquote. These serial numbers are the link between donors and receivers of electoral bonds. These can connect the two so-called silos. Subhash Garg, former Finance and Economic Affairs Secretary, who oversaw the formulation and implementation of electoral bond scheme, said something interesting in this regard to Mojo Story. He called SBI's request for extension of deadline the lamest excuse and said that the bank doesn't require silos to be reconciled or connected for furnishing this information. He reiterated that every bond has a serial number which can be sorted very easily to get information on who donated to whom. And Garg should know he was the one who oversaw the embedding of the hidden serial numbers on the electoral bonds, as SBI had demanded. You should read the whole story, along with the evidences that we put out. The story is available at Reporters Collective website, www.reporters-collective.in. And also consider donating to the collective. We can do this kind of journalism because you back us and you fund our journalism, no one else. 